three, two, one. This is Nick. And this is Amanda. And this is the Performance Plate Podcast, where we give you bite-sized bits of information based on nutrition and exercise science to improve your overall performance. All right, welcome back for part two, where we have our awesome guest, Gavin Aiden, who is literally bricking us up and pumping us up to run through a wall right now about the athlete's mindset. Um, and we're going to go into where we left off on last time is he was talking about taking L's and sometimes you got to embrace the suck just to see how far you can get and doing that will actually make you a better athlete. So in the last two years or so, Gavin has went through some really interesting competition L's we'll say, but he's still come back and came back better every single time he's actually competed after those L's. So we're going to have him talk about things he went through, what his mindset was like, and then also after that, how he was able to stick to still training and just not giving up on his dream. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it's it's a journey, you know, like you, I think for me, I've learned to detach myself Mm -hmm. from the outcome. Yeah. And uh, I don't even really care anymore about what happens. I used to care a lot, and now I kind of went to the other end of the extreme, and so, it's very freeing in a way when you don't you don't give a shit you know yeah. you don't care about the <laughs> yeah. outcome you don't even care about yourself you yeah. know you genuinely just you're so focused on the present mm-hmm. and it's in part enjoying the present and having fun but also pushing yourself to an extreme and that is kind of part of the fun yeah um and that's kind of the mindset that i've had i mean i've definitely been in positions where like the highs were really really high and then yeah. the lows are really really low um, and you're human, you're meant to experience those things, but I think as you mature as a competitor, but also as somebody who's pursuing anything worth pursuing, mm-hmm. you're going to have this emotional maturity where you kind of just try to stay like level. Like yeah. You stay the same no matter what happens. Like great success, okay, cool. Failure, okay, fine. Like, yeah. it, is, it doesn't change the reality that literally the next day or possibly even the next minute, you're gonna be working again, you know? So. Yeah. Um, it doesn't change anything. Yeah, so it's it, it's something that you have to kind of develop over time. Mm-hmm. Um, but the other cool part too is like that's the beauty of training. It's almost like this crash zone where you can fail a lot yeah. and make tons of mistakes. And the whole point is to do that so yeah, that yeah. you can continually get better and learn yeah. grow. So what's um, take us back to Worlds twenty twenty two because I was getting confused on a date South Africa. Yeah how that went for you, and then after that, getting ready for, well, you didn't know at the time, you were just going to nationals, but you actually got invited to go to the Sheffield, and how did you still continue to work hard after that? Because Worlds, I know, did not go 100% the way you wanted to. And at that point, I don't know, let us know, if you were in this mindset shift that you have now. Because Amanda and I talk about the mindset shift a lot, and I don't know if you had that yet until after Worlds go uh, in South Africa. Yeah, so, um... I had the Open World Championship in mm-hmm. basically, I think it was last summer now. So yeah, yeah. so uh, it was in 2022. And I, by that time I had won Junior Worlds um, and I had totaled, for those of you who don't know, so powerlifting, it's squat, bench, and deadlift. Mm-hmm. It is, you get three attempts per lift. Um, and there are judges, there's three of them, one in front, two on the sides. And they look for things like, let's say squat depth, or if you're deadlifting, your knees being locked out. Um, Mm -hmm. They'll they'll give you a press command on the bench press to make sure you're pausing it or the bar motion stops on your chest, things like that. So that's powerlifting in a nutshell. It doesn't really get much more complicated than that. Um, And so long story short, the way that you win in your weight class is by having the highest total, right? So they take essentially your best squat, your best bench, your best deadlift, add them all up together. Mm -hmm. You can set world records in each of those lifts and you can set a total world record as well. Um, which is basically what the Sheffield was all about. So that was like that big event. It was all about yeah. setting world records. A world championship is about having the highest total in your weight class. So in South Africa, um, I ended up placing fourth. Um, had I hit uh, the world record squat, which I think it said at 729, and I think I took 731, mm-hmm. um, I missed it on depth. Had I gotten <coughs> that, I probably would have won. I don't want to say for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, South Africa World Championship was tough because for that meet, I had I had put a lot into it. Yeah. Um, I felt like I was super, super dialed in. I invested the most in terms of my time and my money and, and mm-hmm. just everything, everything just to be there. And as I'm sure you guys know too, like especially with being in graduate school, nobody's really like nobody really cares, and so nobody's really helping you 
you yes. know, pay your way or yeah. take care of everything, mm -hmm. right? Of course. You're kind of on your own. Yeah. There's no like three or four million dollar contract you're gonna get if you do it. You yeah, know? yeah. And so yeah. like it's you you do a lot for just for these moments, mm -hmm. these opportunities, you know? Mm -hmm. And so that's what it felt like. So we gave everything we had and then not only to lose but to also place fourth above all at the world championship was was tough. Um, and so that was that kind of broke me down a little bit. I think I took probably like two weeks to really just mentally recover from kind of going through all of that mm -hmm. and putting everything in and taking that big of a fail. Um, and, and that was when my mindset kind of shifted because okay. up until that point, I had been feeling a lot of the pressure because I had been caring so much about winning, about the title and about mm. all this stuff. And, and then like that in conjunction with some other things I was going on in my personal life, um, I just stopped giving a shit. Like, yeah. you got to a point where you're like, you know what, I don't even care anymore. Like, I genuinely don't care. All I want to do is lift weights, enjoy what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and push my body to an extreme. And almost like, fall in love with figuring out how far you can go. Yeah. Um, and so that's where my mindset shifted, going yeah. into Sheffield. So that was the biggest difference. It nice. was, South Africa kind of was like, the icing on the cake, you know, so to speak, um, after a year and a half or two years of competing and not doing well. Um, and then, yeah, going into Sheffield, kind of everything just flipped. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. That's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So yeah. now, when you, what, so part of your flip, what was that flip? Like falling in love with training? Was it the fact that you just have to realize, besides the detachment of the goal, which is amazing, because the fact that, like, you're just detached from that, if you're realizing that you just need to put in the work to get to where you want to go. And if you do put in the work, you'll get there. If it's time, and I know because you're a man of faith and stuff like that, if it's God's timing for you to have that at that moment, you'll have it. Yeah. As long as I put in the steps that I need to. So besides that, is there anything else that you can think of that like helped you push that mind shift? shift? Did you have to like literally just like, sit down and be like, okay, I need to, or it could just be that, I need to take myself away from the result and just let things happen when they're meant to happen for me, but I got to put in the work that I want to put in the work. Yeah. Like follow the process as well as build up. Um, I mean, it's really, it's all in your head. So for, mm -hmm. for me, I think it was more so just, yeah, just letting go. You yeah. Know, you have to let go and, and trust and, you know, and for me, yeah, I am a, a man of faith. So for me, I, my trust is in, in God, but it's mm -hmm. also kind of like in myself. It's, yeah. it's not so much, you just, like I said, it's, it's almost like a, the best analogy that I can use that I compare when I talk to, especially like younger kids mm -hmm. coming up, yeah. um, when I try to give them some advice is it's like chasing a rabbit, right? You yeah, want yeah. to catch the rabbit. So you can do it one of two ways. You can either run after the rabbit yeah, and yeah. chase the rabbit and it will keep running. And even if you do manage to catch it, it's a pure victory, right? You're exhausted, you're tired, you're worn out. Chances are you won't even get to catch it. Yeah. The other way, just set the trap. The goals is the same, but yeah. if you spend your time, instead of chasing it, set the trap. Yeah. Not only will you probably catch it, but when, while you're waiting for that trap to work, you can be doing other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can take your mind away. You can be preparing everything else, you know? And so my mindset now is not about chasing anything. Mm -hmm. Just set the trap. Yeah. And that part of that setting the trap is having yeah. the vision, believe in it, and just simply do the work. Yeah. Trust that everything will come. Just focus on the present. And do you feel like your results changed once your mindset shifted? Yeah, absolutely. Or at the very least, my my enjoyment yeah. and my fulfillment change, you know, like yeah. it's, it's, you know, and I think also too, like, I don't give a shit, like I genuinely don't care, you yeah. know, it's like, and don't get me wrong, in the moment and after, you know, being on stage and stuff, you're like, man, dude, I wish, I wish I would have won, or I wish I would have had this, whatever, but that's very human things, you know, and mm -hmm. so like, once you have time to yourself, you can recollect, and again, you kind of resume that frame of mind of like, yeah, man, like this is purely about not the it's not the outcome it's who you become in pursuit yeah. of the outcome you know? and it almost sounds like this higher perspective looking down on the process and just seeing this is life like this this moment is life yeah. and if i'm constantly focused on this end goal i'm missing out on everything that i'm experiencing yeah, yeah. and it fucks up everything dude because and I used to live like this too, and sometimes I still struggle with it, but you have this fear of making mistakes. Mm -hmm. You have this fear of failure, yeah. you know, and all of these things combine, and the downside is that now casts a massive shadow over your decision-making in the present, yeah. right? Because you're looking over there, not here. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so then you end up, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, because mm -hmm. you end up fucking up. Yeah. And then you end <laughs> up fulfilling the fear, right? 
Whereas if instead you just trust that everything will yes. work out the way it should mm -hmm. and that you have the power to adapt to whatever comes your way, and that's the biggest thing. It's like this internal locus of control. Yeah. Once you have that, then it changes the game, you know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. And would you say you have to have some level of faith to be able to do that? Yeah, and I think for everyone it'll be different. I think you have to have faith in yourself, mm -hmm. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, for me, I mean, yeah, I have, yeah. you know, I have faith in God and yeah. Jesus, but you know, that I understand that that may not be for everyone and that's kind right. of on everyone's time, but, um, you absolutely have no choice but to have faith in yourself. Though. Yeah. That's, that's like a mandatory thing. percent. But you can build, you know, it's not something that you don't, you don't have to just be born with that. So. Yeah. You don't have to wake up one day and be like, all right, got faith in myself. We're good to go. Like, no, it yeah. takes time. <laughs> absolutely. It takes yeah. a lot of time to build that effect up, but I think that's. A huge point that Gavin's hitting on is just you have to understand the and Amanda said it that outside looking in perspective yeah really just taking a second like in the moment yes and if you've ever watched powerlifting or just watched Gavin lift at the Sheffield to a specific specifically going into your final deadlift you were just like you felt the emotions coming out of you like you're screaming you just felt it but in that moment yes you're ready to go your emotions are there if you hit it obviously you feel great if you don't hit it you're not gonna you're like oh, fuck you're gonna be upset about it but then let that time pass and don't make a decision on like oh i'm quitting powerlifting because i didn't get the result i want until like give it a few days yeah. yeah like i think what was 48 i mean you knew the goal at the end of worlds after that but it probably took about what 24 48 hours for you to realize like okay maybe it wasn't what i needed right at that moment but like no, I didn't give a shit as soon as I finished the pull. Okay. Like, I knew. Yeah. It's <laughs> fine. Perfect. <laughs> no, because it, it, I didn't, it, again, like, and this is kind of like my mindset with almost everything. It's like, yeah. just push yourself to the absolute extreme. Mm -hmm. And, like, the reality is if you're <clears throat> pursuing something, it's probably something that you either, A, are naturally good at, uh, or B, have some sort of inclination towards, which means you have this intrinsic motivation for it to begin with, mm -hmm. which yeah. is good. That's, yeah. like, your tool, right? So because you have that superpower already, now you know that you have insane potential to do that thing. Yeah. Like, I, out of all the things I could do, do I really believe, yes, I am delusional enough to believe I could go to the NBA. <laughs> however, <laughs> however, you are 6'1". There are, yes, so. it is, yes. There are, there are other options that my body would probably be better suited for physically, yes. right? And so that's, again, it's one of those things where if I'm looking at powerlifting, if I'm looking at, let's say, wrestling or something mm -hmm. that I can tell that my build is, is kind of meant for, my build would be successful with, now I have this natural inclination towards it. I almost can have this immediate sense of like, oh, it's just a matter of time. It's not a matter of if, just a matter of when. You know? <laughs> Wouldn't you say that's recognizing your gifts? Yeah, absolutely, 100%, absolutely. Which yeah. is amazing. So that's the thing, like, if you talk to Gavin about anything, like he said, do I believe, am I delusional? I wouldn't even say the word delusional about going to the NBA. Yeah, it may not be the best sport for him, but recognizing his gift in other aspects. But he also just has this, and you've heard him say it before, this faith, this belief that I'm going to be great. And it's not even like a cockiness. It's not a, like, I'm better than you. It's, no, you can be great too. I'm so humble in that I know I can be great. So like, put it in front of me and it's a matter of time if I put in the work. Yeah. I think that's what a lot of people don't look at. Is yeah putting in the work and I think when you start to put trust in that and you start to have faith and then you see how that plays out yeah. it just continues from there mm -hmm. and like every time that I fall out of faith or God you I think they're honestly the same thing like not the same thing but mm -hmm. like I think that you know yeah faith in both of them is very similar and when you fall out of that or like when you're living in your fears mm -hmm. you know that that's still there you can always go back to it yeah and you can always get back to that place and then keep moving forward yeah yeah, yeah absolutely you just can't let your fears stop you and and our fears are different than your fears my fears are let's say failure the business shuts down whatever it is or not being able to lift x amount of weight Gavin's fears are different than my fears. Amanda's fears are different. But whatever it is, you can't let it pull you back so much so that it's inhibiting you from being your best possible self. And I think that's what people tend to forget is, well, why me? Yeah. Well, why not you? Right. I think you've said that multiple times to me. Like, well, why not you? Yeah. You, know, you tell me every time at the war room. You can squat 600 next week. You just got to believe. <laughs> You'll never know what your gifts are, though, unless you start to play around and try. And I think that that's something else you've done is dabbled in all of these different yeah. sports and yeah. things like 
polo yes. to powerlifting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, that's what cracks me up is people are like, there's no way he like swam or played polo. I'm like, you see him as the powerlifter Gavin. Yeah. It wasn't always this. Gavin. <laughs> I wasn't always as thick. Yes. Like three C's. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and no, also being true. realistic, like gravitating p- towards powerlifting because you were like, I have the tools to do this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, this is realistic. I can make it happen in this lifetime sort of thing. Yeah. And like when I was in the car uh, at Colgate at night thinking to myself, like, man, dude, I'm a bum. Like all my training, I spent hours in the gym and was it for? I wasn't thinking, oh, powerlifting. I love yeah. powerlifting. I was thinking I want to be a world champion. So what's what vehicle is going to take me there? Mm-hmm. I didn't give a shit what it was. Yeah. You know, it just happened to be powerlifting. Yeah. And there's no disrespect to the sport, but like, I don't love the sport like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. not married to the sport. Yeah, I'm guess. married to the idea of becoming a, of the best. And so like, that's yeah. And I I truly do. I have so many interests in so many areas. I do believe that anything you choose, anything you set your mind to, um, you can become absolutely phenomenal. And and like the reality is. The only way that you don't become great is if you stop, Mm -hmm. right? Because, like, death is inevitable. So we're all going to die at some point. So just embrace that. When you embrace that, then you're pretty much free, right? So if you embrace the fact that worst-case scenario, you don't wake up tomorrow, okay, well, then now the opportunities are endless because I can literally do whatever I want Uh in terms of pursuing greatness, right? (laughs) And there's really no way to truly fail, right? So, like, so once you embrace that, it's just about going full steam ahead. You have to burn your ships. You have to go all in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's oh yeah! <laughs> if you're going to take the no, island, you gotta burn your ships. The man. burning your ships resonated right away because with business, you can't have a plan B. No, nope. like that's the only plan you can have if you really want to be successful. Yeah, yeah. you can't. Yeah. I mean, Gavin's literally burned his ships, and we talked about it the other day at the war room. Was that like you burned your ships with powerlifting? That's you're doing it. You have no no plan B right now. Yeah, you need to you need to switch heavily if you want to go into like wrestling. We'll say or. Olympic lifting, you need to switch a little bit. So right now you're like, nope, I'm all in on this. This is what I got to do. Yeah. Well, that also comes from like this, just an eight sense that we all have mm-hmm. of adaptation. Like yeah. we are the top of the food chain only because we can adapt. Yes. Um, we have the intelligence to do it, uh, the EQ and the IQ. And I think that the reality is when we work together, we just dominate. So like, you know, from an adaptation perspective, you have all the tools you need to, to get through whatever, like even in terms of thinking about just real life stuff. Like there's no, at least in America right now, there's no crazy war Mm -hmm. going on. There's no famine. There's no, like it's very rare to find a case where the majority of people are truly suffering from things that are absolutely outside of their control. Mm -hmm. So I'm very blessed at least for myself. I'll speak for myself to not be in one of those situations, you Mm -hmm. know? Um, And so who the fuck am I to be complaining and bitching about what I don't have and where I can't get, despite the fact that I have all this, you know? So. Um, if anything, like, and that's, I tell that to everyone, like, you know, growing up, like, so my, when I was born, uh, my parents were on welfare and foods, and my dad's a spine surgeon, mm-hmm. so he was in medical school, my mom was working uh, one or two jobs, and um, and growing up, we didn't have a ton of money, but then, as my dad graduated, and I mean, you guys know, because you guys are in the medical field, yeah. you have to kind of work your way through things, mm-hmm. um, you know, he started to make more money, and started to become more successful, and um, yeah, and I have my three younger siblings, and so now, you know, we do very well, but it's because my parents made sacrifices for us, you know? And so to me, it's like, I look at that, it's like, you have got to be out of your mind if you think I'm not going to try and take that further, mm-hmm. right? And yeah. like, even if that for me in the, in this moment looks like becoming a world champion powerlifter, fine, like that's fine. Yeah. It just, we have to realize the potential because otherwise, literally, what is the point yeah. you know, of being here, so. 100%. Yeah. Is there anyone in your life that has had a really massive influence on you? Yeah, no, there's a lot of people. I'm sure there are, but like, I don't know <laughs> yeah. if there's... Yeah, ooh, I mean, my mom, for sure, both my parents, my, yeah. my dad and my mom in different ways, you know, like a lot of my confidence and my hustle mindset, um, almost all of it really comes from my dad's side, mm-hmm. and then a lot of everything else about me um, comes from my mom's side, especially like the faith stuff and mm-hmm. uh, my character and all that, you know, but re- yeah, both, I mean, both are, are shared, and again, I'm very blessed to have that, but there have been a lot of people in my life who... Um, have played significant roles. Um, Jessica Tesoro played a massive role mm-hmm. in my life and, and really kind of helped me through uh, a lot of stages that I kind of went through, both as like just a human to grow, but also as an athlete. Um, there are a lot of people that yeah. have played a massive, massive role, but it's also too like people that I've never met. Like I used to look up to Arnold a ton and it was yeah. kind of like, <laughs> look what the fuck he did, why yeah. can't I do that? You yeah. know? And so he may not know it, but 
he played a massive role in you know in kind of influencing me or inspiring me rather mm -hmm. to to try and achieve what I'm doing. So you had chose to like have those people surround you during yeah. those formative years. Like I think that's I think that's something really cool. Those the people because say you don't have people in your life that are resembling like where you want to be or the characters you're looking for. Like you're talking about pulling things from different people. Maybe they're not directly in your life, but like we live in a time where you can go out and you can listen to a podcast, you mm -hmm. can watch a YouTube, you can go on an Instagram, and like you can surround yourself with all of those mindsets and yeah. you can build your own community. Mm -hmm. You can build yourself up that way. I know like when I, again, when, not to give the business example again, but when I was moving into like, there was no one else in my life doing that. Mm -hmm. So I just surrounded myself by all these people that thought that way. And it was something that helped me connect with you. Yeah. And now here we are in person, like, yeah. you know, so I think that. Yeah recognizing that you do have the tools around you to start to create that community yeah you have no cho like what's the alternative right you know what yeah. i mean like you got you we all have shit like we all have mm -hmm. excuses with valid stuff too yeah. like really valid stuff it doesn't change the reality that if you want to get to where you're going you're gonna have to just forego them you know and just yeah. let them go yeah and just like be okay with your circumstance like it is what it is yeah. you know you have to work with what you have it's not how many resources you have it's how resourceful you are with what you have and like yeah. that's yeah that's what it comes down to that's the heart of an entrepreneur like that's the heart of a business yeah. owner is yeah. genuinely figuring out like okay this is what i have how can i get there yeah. you know and that's it so yeah i mean and i'm not an expert by any means but me you either. are what you <laughs> eat. Yeah, yeah. no but yeah. we're no, all learning right. you know yeah. but yeah you you are what you eat you know mm -hmm. and it's not just actual consumables it's it's quite literally the content you know yeah. the words that you hear from your friends like the things that the thoughts that they put into your brain right. it matters all that stuff matters so like it i try to be very very cautious with that stuff um but yeah there have been plenty of people who have had negative and positive impacts there are people who have net positive impacts that yeah. came through a lot of negative impacts mm -hmm. you know it genuinely come and it sounds so it's shitty to say it because <laughs> it's like of course, but it really just comes down to your response to it. Yeah. Do you choose to grow from it or do you yeah. choose to like let it be, yeah. you know, the thing that brings you down, you know, so. Completely, yeah. You know, that's, I mean, that's more the most accurate way to describe all of that stuff without even realizing that you have to, you are what you eat, you know, and like you said, it's not diet, it's not, I mean, yes, that matters, don't get me wrong, but the company that you keep around you. Like, yeah. There's a saying out there, you're the summation of the five people you spend the most time with. Um, Gavin keeps good company, as I know, he has a lot of people surrounding him that are very influential in his life, but very motivating, very, just at different points in life, points in life as well. Like, they're a little bit further ahead of him, but they, in other aspects of industries or entrepreneurship or even sports, and like, that's one of the most amazing things, because like Amanda said, you have access, to, if maybe they're not in your direct circle, you still have access to people. You can log yeah. on to Instagram, and if Gavin's a guy you're looking up to, you could go on there and see what he squatted on Monday, 6.50, high bar for five. No, was it 6.50 or 6.35? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> this guy, you know. He runs it up. <laughs> can't even do his research. This is insane. I'm yeah. pretty sure I was telling you say 6.50, but. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go in and do 6.50. Yeah, right, then I realized I probably shouldn't. No. So. Um, I'm pretty sure John would have had my head if I was like, 6.50. <laughs> yeah. um, but you have resources at your disposal to look at up to. And you may not meet them in person, but that's okay. But you can watch their, their content. You can learn from them. You can want to be them and idolize what pieces of them you like and then other pieces as well. Because you're not just a one-trick pony. Like, yes, Kevin is a power lifter. But like I said before, he's actually an entrepreneur. He has his own app. He does great with social media. He does all this other stuff on podcasts all the time. He does all this other stuff that also he pulls from other people that he surrounds himself with. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Makes sense. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty good. I mean, that's kind of what we all try to do. Like, I'm fortunate enough to know Gavin. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to know Amanda. And we just got connected because we happened to go to Mindset for a little bit. I came yeah. to Tony, but then I saw you, and I was like, hey. And now look at how far we've come yeah. together. And that's kind of how you build Yeah. Build your circle. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. You know? got to put your head down and just... Run. <laughs> <laughs> through the wall. Through the wall, exactly. Right, right, right. If you're not running through the wall, there's something wrong. Don't don't try and turn around the wall. That doesn't no, work that way. No. <laughs> if you're not bleeding. Exactly. Um, so, Gavin, let's just real quick talk about what are you doing right now? Like, what is your biggest struggle that you're having right now in the sense of, if there is any, getting your mindset straight for worlds coming up in June? Um, if well, there is any. For for the world's prep, there's really not much I'm struggling with. I'm kind of just like, 
I mean, there's 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 challenges. Yeah. There's adversity, but like, you know, again, you just kind of it doesn't matter. You know, you just do what you need to do when mm-hmm. you need to do it, and consistently look for solutions. Trust your team. You know, develop your team. Yep. And um, and that's it. You know. Yeah. So yeah, I'd, I'd say in terms of like struggles, yeah, I think. Like I said, there's challenges. There'll mm-hmm. always be challenges. Um, anytime. I mean, I haven't competed in the states in like two and a half years now. Every meet I've done for the last two and a half years has been international. Um, so by now, it's like uh, it's just it's just variables. Like yeah. it just is when people overhype it. Like mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> does it suck to be in a country where people don't speak your language? Yeah, but like you just you deal with it. Yeah. You know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I think the bigger challenges as of right now are coming more from the business side and figuring out how I can service people to a better degree mm-hmm. and, and improve the business but scale the business and yeah. you know and also figure out a way to increase the longevity of the business you know that's something yeah. that will kind of exist beyond me mm-hmm. so to speak yeah. Um, yeah and then trying to dabble into other areas of industry as well you know things that are outside of the fitness scope but but yeah in terms of the world prep not really anything that is a serious struggle it's more so just like well i think the first thing on the menu is this mini cut yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> that's and so that's so meant but so like that's 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 it it's a mini it's a struggle for you because it's a mini cut which yeah. is different than you're yeah. used to you don't deload your diet anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have to take it a little bit more seriously which is good i mean you do take your diet seriously but now right now you're in that mini well cup. the thing is i don't even understand how the fuck i got so fat like like i'm thick but like here's the thing i shouldn't be 216 on like not every day you know like i the thing is i so what this is what i like to do we do a body recon yeah right so what we do is we'll cut so we can cut fat Mm-hmm. improve my, uh, body composition which mm-hmm. is great you'll look like a Greek god it feels amazing <laughs> and then going into the meat we want to eat into the meat yeah so we can recover better and yes. have some some mass right and then we water cut whatever that difference was mm-hmm. so for me the most I really want to water cut is like 10 pounds uh, because anything more than that is gonna be really tough to, to yeah. recomp the day of the meat because mm-hmm. you only have two hours um, so this time because I'm so heavy we are mini cutting again going into this meet, and it just sucks because I like I'm just gaining weight. Like I don't understand <laughs> what's going on. There's something in the air because Could be. yeah, I I don't know, but it's fine. I mean, it is what it is. Where I'm at a point now where um, you kind of like like you don't panic. You yeah. know, you've been through it before, and I've had some brutal water cuts. So like to me, as long as I have a way to sweat, we'll make weight. Yeah. You know, it's just a matter of you just embracing lot. it. Yeah. So. Um, so I don't, I don't really get worried about it, which is helpful because stress can definitely affect weight loss and yes. things like that. Um, but yeah, no, this mini cut is not. It's a struggle. It's a yeah, dude. I want to eat. I, I understand. <laughs> I like it's hard. Eat. Yeah. Do you like to eat? I like to eat. We all do. This is, uh, who would do this? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know your why, and that's why you're doing it. That's right. You're that's like, right. We refuse right. to be average. Exactly. Be average. <laughs> and you're embracing the suck, which is right now. Yes. Um, so, Amanda, do you have any other questions for Gavin that you can think, think of? So. Um, Not right now. Okay. Yeah, there, we can always come up with more, I'm sure, over time. Um, so, Gavin, you said stuff about business and what you want to do with it. So, for the people listening, how do they find you on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube? Um, what are you in, What are you doing right now with those things as well as your app and all of that stuff? How do people find you and connect with you? If they yeah. Want to? Yeah. So... Instagram, I believe it's just uh, Gavin, G-A-V-I-N, underscore A-D-I-N. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just my first name, underscore last name. And then TikTok is just at GA Training. Uh, the website is normally GavinAidenTraining.com, mm-hmm. um, but I'm currently redesigning the whole thing, and I'm completely stripping the product offering, so I'm redoing all that stuff. I'm actually going to be partnering, collaborating with a ton of different programming uh, specialists in different fields nice. to come up with some really, really awesome materials and resources for people. So... Uh, that stuff will be hopefully available within the next eight weeks. Nice. And then um, I will be also offering a membership. Um, still trying to figure out kind of like what I want that to look like, mm-hmm. but that will be available also within the next month or two. Nice. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, guys, always feel free to reach out, DM me. Um, yes. I do have a Discord. It's not public yet, but I'm still trying to figure that out. It's built. I know it's it built, is. I know it is. But <laughs> it is, yeah. So I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to manage all of that stuff mm-hmm. and how I want to systematize everything, but um, yeah. yeah. Nice. What, what's your TikTok again? 
Geo training. Geo training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And YouTube is, I think, Gavin Aiden, right? Yeah, it's just Gavin Aiden, which Perfect. that we're trying to get more active on too. Mm -hmm. uh, we've kind of nailed down the concepts and the style that we want to go for, and um, yeah, it's now just a matter of filming the content, editing it, and putting it out. So awesome. Yeah. So you're trying to find Gavin. There's multiple ways to find him, uh, and you probably have just come across his TikToks or. Instagram reels or any of that because they some of them are really hysterical with how to spot people and yeah. other ones are just <laughs> other ones are just badass lifting stuff, ones yeah. but yeah him and his buddy John uh, Rondi they make hilarious videos together and it's kind of great um, and especially when you're in the background watching them make the videos it's actually even funnier because yeah. <laughs> you hear the fun stuff of that but Gavin thank you so much for being on the podcast um, it's been a pleasure you're gonna crush it at Worlds as you know. Um, just embrace the mini cut that you have to deal with right now. <laughs> so thank yeah. you for coming on. Yeah, thank you. It's been um, awesome getting to know you. It's awesome to have you here. We'll definitely have you on again, hopefully after Worlds when you're a world champion. And then we'll go from after there. After he starts endurance running, because yes. he wants to do that next. Well, we're going to do the 50 mile hike. Yes, yes. We'll see? Yeah. exactly. So we're going to change, Can't completely wait. change, completely cut weight, you know. Actually, hiking's right up my alley, so I would do that. <laughs> see. Is it actually? Yeah. yeah. You're insane. Okay. <laughs> you can hike. Don't get, you, you can hike. What, can I move my legs up a mountain? Sure, maybe, yes. but like, yeah. why the fuck would I do that? <laughs> you know, it does not make sense. Do you build muscle really doing that? No, no. not really. Okay. So. Why would I do that? <laughs> so we can go back to the whole barbell thing on the beach. And you gotta wear, dude, you gotta wear like those pants, you don't like have the weird to. pants with the L.L. Bean shoes and shit. Dude, you don't have, have to. You have to wear L.L. Bean. <laughs> you have no choice. You have to wear L.L. Bean. You also need an algae with stickers on. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. Yeah, you're talking about like the thermos, I have one right? in my bag out of there. Of course you do. Yeah. Why <laughs> <laughs> do I forget? You're from Colorado. Or you're tired, or well, no, I'm not from there. <laughs> well, you moved I'm there. definitely from here. Yeah. So you're like trying to adopt the culture, huh? Uh -huh. So you're yeah, afraid. I'm trying to fit in. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> when you're ready, when you're ready to come back to real life, let me know. <laughs> so, thank you for joining us, Gavin. Um, if you are listening on Spotify, Apple, or YouTube, please like, subscribe, tell your friends, leave a comment, um, and tell us what you think of the episode. Thank you again. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, Gavin. And until next time, we'll see you guys later. <laughs>